Is there any scientific basis for thinking our universe may have been created with purpose? John Polkinghorne worked alongside an astronomer who made a critical discovery that shook his beliefs. One of the great triumphs of astrophysics in the second half of the 20th century was to figure out how the elements are made. Because the very early universe is very simple, it only makes very simple elements, in fact hydrogen and helium, the two simplest elements, and you can't really do very much with them, they have very boring chemistry. You need much more elements if you're going to have something as interesting as life, and in particular you need carbon. The chemistry of life is the chemistry of carbon. So where does carbon come from? There's only one place in the whole universe where carbon is made. It's made in the interior nuclear furnaces of the stars. Every atom of carbon in our bodies was once inside a star. We're people of stardust. Now, how that happened was figured out in Cambridge. Fred Hoyle, a senior colleague of mine, uh, was one of the leading figures in this. And they were trying to figure out how carbon was made. They had helium. And if they could make three heliums stick together, that would make carbon. But it's, they couldn't figure out how to do that. You, to get three small things like that to stick together at once, you can't do it. OK, say so we do it bit by bit, make two stick together, that makes beryllium. Say so it's around a bit, another one comes along, makes carbon. But it doesn't work because beryllium is very, very unstable. It just disappears like that. So they were stuck. And then Fred had a good idea, and he said, um, it'll just go if there is something called a resonance, a very enhanced effect, uh, which is just at the right energy in carbon to make that extra one stick on much, much more quickly than you would have thought. So you're very pleased with yourself. We went off the nuclear data tables just to check that this resonance, this effect, was there, and it wasn't. And uh, so he was, Fred was a very stubborn <laughs> persistent friend. He rang up some friends in the States and said, look, you've missed something in carbon. There's a resonance there that you haven't spotted, but I know exactly where it is because you had to have this energy. And they were probably a bit reluctant to look, but in the end they went and looked and they found it. And that's a wonderful scientific story. But also it struck Fred that it's more than a scientific story because, of course, if the laws of nuclear physics had been a tiny bit different, either there would be no resonance at all or it would be some other energy which would be no good. And Fred, who had a lifelong commitment to atheism, is reported to have said in the Yorkshire accident, beyond my power to say, the universe is a put-up job. In other words, this can't be just a happy accident. This is too significant for that. There must be something behind all this. Because Fred didn't like the word God, he says some capital I intelligence has monkeyed with the laws of the universe. Observing the universe, then, can spring riddles for atheism, too. Hoyle's groundbreaking discovery led to what subsequently became known as the Anthropic Principle. 